Hello, the following video you are about to watch is an extract from my new course and book, Atomic Note-Taking. So enjoy the video, and if you want to check out more about the course, go to atomicnotetaking.com. So you might be in an educational environment, so you're studying, and you might be thinking, can I use the Zettelkasten method as a student in the classroom? So I've been fortunate to actually give a seminar about the Zettelkasten to PhD students for the Queen Mary University of London. And that um, really showcases how you know, if you're in a research field, the Zettelkasten is absolutely a vital tool for you to organise your ideas and write your papers and your journals and assignments from that. But let's think about the classroom itself. Now, I think of being in a classroom where generally you have, say, a lecturer speaking or a teacher speaking. Maybe they've got slides, that's all fine. You could also have virtual classrooms in a similar way, or you could be at a conference where someone's presenting. So those are sort of all the similar similar things. And the question is, um, is it useful? In other words, should you be taking notes and all of that? And especially if you get the slides thereafter, should you just sit there and and just listen to the whole thing and then go away and make your notes based on the handouts. I personally feel that being able to make notes during the classroom is really valuable because what you're doing is you're spending the time while you're active in that session, but you're also filtering that information. So much like reading a book, you would make notes, watching a video, you would make notes as you go. You, there is maybe some benefit to watching the whole thing and then maybe watching it a second time for notes if you've got the time to do that. Um, but the problem with just listening is that we tend to uh, side with things that feel more recent. So there's a thing called the recency effect. And it's where we put more emphasis on things that we've recently heard and it, and it sort of outweighs in our significance than say things that we heard a while ago and it's just a phenomenon that you know that, that humans um humans have the other thing is you may feel like you understand it and it's all making sense and it's all going in which means you think oh great i don't need to make so many notes on this but you suffer from what's called recognition versus recall because you're not actively learning you're not actively making notes you're just recognizing whether you understand it, but you're not able to recall it, then that will make it harder for you when it comes to your assignments and studying for exams and that. So I would say that there is absolutely a benefit of catching the notes as it goes. If you do have the advantage of going through it a second time and to make your notes from that, then fine. But do be mindful that you know it is your time that is precious. Um, that's the only thing you can't get more of than anyone else. And you may find that if you can optimize your time to do that filtering and capturing, then by saving time, you can use it on more useful activities, such as writing your literature notes where you're rebuilding your understanding. If you have to spend another hour, two hours, making your notes from the handouts, then you're essentially borrowing time that you potentially don't have for your understanding notes, the, the literature notes. The other thing is you get to filter the information as it happens. So, you know, while it could take an hour long, say, lecture to go through your notes, you might only have, you know, 10 minutes or 20 minutes of content worthy out of that hour because of all the preamble and um, other things that are going on. So to then have to do the hour again to pull out those inf that information can be quite exhaustive. So, so use it as an opportunity to filter your notes. And you know, personally, I, I use bullet point lists in an in a notes app. I use the Bear app as I'm listening. I can touch type, so that's a benefit for me. So I can keep eye contact on the slides, and I can actually type things down. I can type as roughly as quick as what someone can say something. Um, so that helps for me to get that information down. If anything, I actually do create more notes than I need, which is fine. I can, at least I'm doing some level of filtering uh, in that process. And the other thing is by making those notes, it does create a, um, a freshness in your mind. So it helps you have that association of, you know, there's a part spatial awareness of where the notes are on the page, helps with the recall, helps you find, navigate where the notes are. Um, so if you don't have that, then 
um, yeah, it, it's uh, you've got to start from scratch when you go to create your fleeting notes or your literature notes thereafter. So what I absolutely would recommend is that you use the lecture for your fleeting notes. This is just to filter the information and have your raw set of notes. And, you know, I remember when I was at university and all of that, um, that would be my note taking. That would be the, the extent of, you know, that just gets filed away, goes in the big pile of notes. And somehow I have to do something with it when I need to study for an exam, for example. Whereas if you then take the discipline after the lecture to rewrite those atomically in your own ideas, uh, in your own in in your own way, then you're actually building your understanding. You're actually learning that material. And I think that is the secret source of of success when it comes to the Zettelkast and in, in education is you're not just a master of regurgitating notes. You are understanding it. It's embodied in your own, own subconscious in a way that come exam time, come assignment time, come presentation time, it's just there. It's more natural. You you really have put the legwork in and it'll pay dividends again. So that's really the overview of how I would look about the Zettelkasten in a classroom setting.